I love Banjo-Kazooie. That one statement alone, along with the title of this video, will already clue you into my feelings on Nuts and Bolts. While I do have plenty to say about this game, I think it's best to start out with a bit of the backstory. Banjo-Kazooie is a platformer collectathon developed by Rare Studios, and it was originally released in 98 on the Nintendo 64. I first played it when I was really young, and I just loved it. The characters were entertaining and memorable, the music is still amazing to this day, and as a testament to its quality as a game, I still find myself replaying Banjo-Kazooie at least once a year. So at the end of Banjo-Kazooie, Grinsilda the Witch has been defeated, and from beneath a large boulder, she says, Stupid, bare, and dumb Kazooie, I'll be back in Banjo-Tooie, as promised. Two years later, she returned in the amazing sequel titled Banjo Tooie. The sequel can best be described as more. More things to collect, more great characters, and bigger levels with more things to do in them. It was everything a sequel should be, and it made sure that I'd be a Banjo Kazooie fan for life. Just like with the first game, at the end of Banjo Tooie, Rintilda has once again been defeated and says, Just you wait until Banjo 3. Now, if it was to follow the previous pattern, it was to be expected that Banjo 3 would be out roughly two years later. That never happened. Rare was bought out by Microsoft, and it wasn't until November 2008 that we got a new Banjo-Kazooie game. After waiting for 10 years, fans were excited for the expected follow-up to Banjo-Tooie. Based off of the teaser we got beforehand, it seemed like this new game, Nuts and Bolts, would be exactly what we hoped for, a platforming masterpiece. But, uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, uh, uh, we, uh, we got something very different. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts is not a platformer. The main duo is back, and they're able to run, jump, and climb, but only in a very limited capacity. Instead of using previous moves like the Talon Trot and Beak Buster, Kazooie is given a magical wrench that allows her to create vehicles, which Banjo drives around in. Nuts and Bolts could have been received as a wonderful spin-off game, but the way the story is presented makes that pretty much impossible. Let's talk about the story, which to me is super important, especially for this game series. In the past, a lot of fun of the first two games is experiencing the adventure that Banjo and Kazooie go on. The dynamic between the slow yet kind Banjo and the fast talking snarky Kazooie is great. They are genuine friends working together to overcome whatever challenge stands in their way. This point is important because it influences the rest of the game. Their moveset is made up of very creative uses of their bodies. For example, the duo can perform a high backflip by using both Banjo's jump and Kazooie's wings together. That is just one of the many examples of the gameplay reflecting the friendship between the two characters. Often, they're working together to help others and generally making an impact on the world around them. Unfortunately for Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts, that aspect of two friends going on an adventure is largely forgotten. They do work together, but the worlds they travel to are mostly pointless, since in-game they are explained as being made up by Log. They do help others, but they only interact with their friends who are playing different roles as if they're in a play. At the end of the game, when you look back, you'll see that what you have done has been mostly pointless. To some, this can be a deal breaker. I'm capable of looking past the story and just focus on gameplay, so why don't we do that? The gameplay of Nuts and Bolts is set up like this. You venture into a decently empty world to talk to NPCs which allow you to take part in missions that can actually be fun and interesting. You are always either given a vehicle to use or allowed to create your own. There are races, escort missions, and at least one mission that is basically dominoes. Since you can edit your pre-made vehicle that you are given, every mission challenges your creativity and how you go about solving this. I love that. There are plenty of parts to use, so it's up to you how you overcome those challenges. Then we have the music and visuals. The music is lighthearted and fun, and it pairs well with the gameplay. The characters have a clean, angular design, which is definitely reminiscent of the polygonal graphics from the N64 days. This game is rough. It acts as a reminder of what could have been, but at the same time, I really enjoyed playing it. There is some genuine fun to be had, and it's one of the better vehicle building games that I've played. I think it would have been better if Rare had been able to create two separate games a Banjo 3, and a Nuts and Bolts. Since that's not what happened, we're left with a fun game that has some pretty obvious flaws. If the gameplay seems interesting to you, I actually recommend you should pick this one up for cheap and give it a shot. It might not be what the fans expected, but at the end of the day, I think we got a pretty decent game. Before you go, I'd love to hear what you think about this video. If you liked it, please rate it up. If you didn't like it, please rate it down. I want to know what you think of this. And of course, if you have something to say about this, if you think I'm wrong, if you think I'm right, if you have a completely different take on this game, please leave a comment down below I'd really appreciate it and of course if you want to see more go ahead and subscribe I'd really appreciate it thank you for taking your time to watch the video have a great day and I'll see you later